With Mentor Cruise, it was a both-sided commitment, which both my mentees were coming in 100% and they want to grow. It's always mentors learning from mentees too. And I've learned a ton from every person I talk to. Hey, Nas, thank you so much for uh, joining me on the Mentor Cruise podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm Nas. I have been on Mentor Cruise about a year. And today is the first day on my vacation. So I'm pretty excited having my holiday cup and talking to Dom about all the things we've done on Venture Cruise and the experience. I'm very excited for this talk. Currently, I'm an engineering manager at Netflix and working on building uh, products for building animation content on the platform. And uh, before that, I worked as an IC, which is like individual contributor at Netflix and also was a software architect and a manager on a fintech company. So you've been mentoring for a year on Mentor Cruise, and I checked it out the other day and you're actually a top mentor, like you're in the top five or so of highest rated mentors ever. So before we jump into it, what's your secret sauce? I don't think it's me. I think it's having great mentees. I try to be authentic and I try to be transparent and bring their authentic self uh to the picture so i think that's i don't know if there's a secret sauce but that's basically the way i i work the way i live and you know every, every interaction i have in my life so i think it's all about my mentees that i'm there and it's nothing about me so thank you is it, is it maybe even similar to engineering management where you know you're going from being hands-on let's say a coder to then empowering others in your team to code do you kind of are you able to to pull out parallels from that? Absolutely. I think also this mentorship role were a huge factor in me getting to the engineering management role because that with, with me mentoring people, that's proven to myself that I can empower and enable people. And again and again and again, this happened on this platform. And I was like, yes, maybe this is the right path for me. I should do this on a larger scale. I should do this on the business also and continue this path. So you kind of build a career for you in San Francisco, right? In, in kind of the, the, the heart of tech. Do you feel like it's very competitive to get, you know, you, you work at Netflix, which is one of the biggest tech companies uh, in the world. Is it, is it a competitive environment to, to get in those companies and then also grow into the positions that you have now? I do think Silicon Valley is competitive, not in a negative sense, in a positive sense, because you do have a lot of smart people to learn from here. You can have a lot of access to different people who can mentor you, access to conferences, access to different companies. You can go visit places. So yes, it is competitive, but also it's lots and lots of opportunities. And if you if you really are a motivated person, this can be a launch pad for you to start your career here. In the last episode that we did, it was actually a lot about career development. And, and one thing that stood out to me was that early in your career, or if you want to grow in your career, uh, you should build your, your leadership skills. And, and one part is kind of what you mentioned, right? Basically raising your hand and, and bringing up difficult things and, and being able to take on responsibilities. Was that something that came naturally to you or was it something that you effectively did and just yeah paid attention to? I think speaking up is always hard. I don't know if people are very natural. If they are, that's awesome. But I, it wasn't very natural for me. Um, at the beginning, speaking up was a struggle. But I always tell myself, if I don't raise it, I will never get it. So this mm -hmm. want inside me, this, you know, motivation always pushed me to go more and more and face this, you know, challenges that I have on the way. Yet, so I, I raised my hand. It wasn't, it wasn't natural, but I, that's something I always tell my mentees. If I, if you don't tell people that you want this opportunity or you're interested, you'll never, they will never know. And that's also a key to getting, you know, in career development. It's just raising your hand and say, hey, I'm thinking about this. I'm interested in this. Just tell me how to get there. Maybe I'm not ready today, but I will. I want to be ready for this and just help me get there. In, in actionable terms, when did you kind of realize now's the right time to go into management and how did you start that transition? I don't think there was a moment that you say it's a right time. I just open the door to interviews. The reason I became a mentor is because during my career, there weren't too many people who tell me what to do. And when I started actually talking to a couple of people, then my career actually started to change because I got different feedback from different people. So I started to have these anchor points for myself in my career. People who know me very well 
and I can always double check with them. Am I ready? Even if you're doing interview, you'll never be 100% ready. We need to do a leap of faith and jump in and try. And what's the worst thing's going to happen? That's what I told myself. The worst things I'm going to fail and they're going to tell me here is a bunch of things that you need to learn more and improve on. And I want to take those on and try again. And if you really want something, just just go for it. Just take a leap of faith. And the worst thing is you will learn, which is the best thing. When did the whole mentoring part factor in? Was that already after the transition or was this something you picked up before and maybe also gave you some some benefit? as you made that transition? I've been mentoring for, for a couple of years now. Even before Winter Cruise, I did a lot of volunteer mentoring and girls who code, women who code, women tech makers. Uh, there's a lot of platforms that you know you can also mentor. Even before all of these platforms, I used to mentor people at the company and my friends even, but I've never done it in an official way. And what Mentor Cruise enabled is just a platform that you're officially a mentor and they support you so well through it. And I I had a really great time with my mentees. I feel like people who come in are well wedded in some way and they really are committed. And with Mentor Cruise, that's really standing out to me because when I did outside this platform before, I mentor people, but they're not committed. Like, here's the things you have to take on or here's a study plan, but they never do it. They don't show up. So I always felt like I am the person who is 100% committing, but the other party is not. With Mentor Cruise, it was a both-sided commitment, which both my mentees were coming in 100% and they want to grow. They were motivated. It's always mentors learning from mentees too. And I've learned a ton from every person I talk to and I learn about myself and I ask their feedback like what can I do better you know is there anything I can grow in and they always give me really great feedbacks and those feedbacks were really awesome points of reference for me when I was moving to management because as a manager you're kind of your job or one of the jobs you have is coaching and mentoring you have so many other jobs you you have to do project management you have to do some leadership forms but one of the jobs is coaching and mentoring and I think that's one of the most important part of being a manager is empowering and enabling people and if I can do a good job out of office as as a person to empower and enable i told myself i can i can do a good job of that even doing that in the business form also what you mentioned the transition from you know being a coder or being an individual contributor to to engineering management there's so much more that's going to be on your back basically D- did you struggle with that transition initially or what was the the kind of challenges that you were facing during that time it's totally a different role like when you're in an IC, I think one of the main differences is you are the problem solver, right? You you get a problem, you want to jump in and solve it. You're also a problem finder. You go find this, all of these issues, you come up with proposals and you solve them at the end, or you get a team together to solve the problem. But when you're a manager, you're none of those. You're not a problem finder, you're not a problem solver. You're enabling your team to find problems and solve problems. And it was so hard for me to hold myself at the beginning because we do have this natural tendency as engineers to keep solving problems, but we should give people a space. We should give people a space to go solve it and also to make mistakes and also to fail. And it's hard. And maybe one of the aspects of mentorship is that if you don't want to give your mentees all the answers, otherwise they'll never learn. How do you give that a space? You don't not jumping in with the answer. Hey, here's the way you will solve this. Here's the answer. But you give them a space and time, even if they take them a week to solve a problem. But you will wait until they do it, not when you do it. So this is was a big transition and shift between the mindset of problem solver and an enabler. I think a lot of people look at going to an IC to a manager as a promotion and they think they got a promotion. Hi, and you know, we're growing in the career, but it's not like that. You're transitioning horizontally in these roles, not vertically. And for me, it's just a brand new role when I entered management. It's a brand new world. And from being an individual contributor, now I'm a junior manager. And you should be comfortable with becoming junior again after like many, many years of experience in your career. Going back to level zero should be comfortable for you. First of all, you know, super impressive doing that transition and then doing it so well. It must have been not easy at all. Who do you think 
this transition is really for. As you say, a lot of people think it's it's kind of the natural next step from being a, a senior engineer, right, to go into engineering management. And then maybe people get disappointed to some degree that they can't code anymore, that it's more about people. What are the qualities of a good manager? Oh, great questions. A lot of different things. I don't know if I know them all because people are different and being good is so relative. So I will tell the things that I think it's I'm doing it to be a good manager. Definitely being a transparent person and honest, be authentic, be your true self and really find that for yourself. What is your style? Because good is very relative for different people. But as a manager, you want to listen. And also as a mentor, you want to listen a lot than you talk. You want to observe. You want to become a better observer. That's a skill that a person has to grow when they move to leadership to identify people's strengths. And there is these aspects of, you know, micromanaging, which is something I always don't like, even as an IC and don't want to be as a manager ever. And that comes back to listening and observing. How do you observe work without asking about work? And a lot more goes to dealing with people, interacting with people, understanding people, personalizing. And the last thing I always tell myself, even as, as a person, as a mentor, as an engineer, it's around prioritizing understanding and delaying judgment. A lot of engineers, I feel like they're building out their, their hard skills very aggressively to be able to kind of go through the ranks to that senior position. But, you know, soft skills matter in engineering itself. And then it matters even more once you go to an engineering management position. Can people build soft skills kind of in a similar way that they do hard skills? Or is it a, a kind of different domain that people should look at? I think learning is different for people. Like I, I learn different way than, than others. For me, I mean, I, I learn my technical skills by doing. So by coding, building projects, reading documents, these are the things that makes me learn my technical skill. But software skills are different. You need to put it into practice, but not with the machine, but with people. And the hardness comes about the mistakes. If you make a mistake in a code, it's so easy, right? You just console lock, here it is, let's change it. No heart, no fail. But then you make a mistake with people in communication, in collaboration, then it's the trust is hindered. And that's harder to build up. It's no longer a computer or a machine that can just wipe it out and rewrite it from the beginning. So it's more diligent. And knowing when and how to bring up something and knowing what areas that you have to improve, it's so crucial because it also have a way more impact than a technical skill. So learning it might be for you a different way. For me was learning books, you know, learning about ideas, looking at myself, a lot of self-awareness, what areas I have to incorporate, what are the things I can incorporate in my work to get better and just keep asking that for that feedback over and over again to reach a point that I know I mean, still have a ton to grow. For people that learn best by doing, what are kind of actionable things that they could do? I always say become a mentor. And that's, that's <laughs> an awesome way of putting your skills into practice outside work and really getting feedback from different people. One thing about mentorship, you get a chance to work with a variety of people. If you do it like at work, you work with people who are a good fit for your company. And with mentorship, you work with a variety of people and with different personalities, with different needs, and you're really putting yourself into practice of, can I serve a variety of people with different needs and different personalities? And can my softer skills shine here? Or is there areas that I'm lacking? I can, I can only be great with this type of people, but I don't know how to handle this type of people. I have to work more on this area. So working with this various type of people and really exposing yourself and then see what are the gaps there and really look back and reflect. And reflection is a big part of my career. I do it every week. Reflect back onto myself. See how did, how did I do this week? How did I do with my mentorship? What can I do better? And it's, it's funny because now I reach a point that I know my shortcomings before people realize it. So when they tell me, I'm like, mm, good, yeah, on target, on point, you're right. I know it. I'm working on it. I think that's a, a nice place to, to end. I, I thought it was very impressive to hear about your journey into engineering management. You've experienced so much that it was just very insightful to hear from you. 
and to learn a little bit more about the position of an engineering manager. Definitely everyone that's listening to the podcast should check out your profile on Mantra Cruise and everywhere around the internet. We're going to link them in the description. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on the Mantra Cruise podcast. 